Hi, my name is Marshall Levesque. I'm going to be telling you about a new method we developed capable of discriminating single nucleotide variants on RNA that we can measure through microscopy and then how we applied this technique to quantify allele-specific RNA expression in single cells. The human genome comes in two copies, one from each parent. And when the DNA of a gene needs to be transcribed, there is a choice made between the maternal or paternal copy. In this cartoon, we show a cell that is heterozygous for a given gene, and when a gene is transcribed in the nucleus, we see the nascent RNA collecting the nucleus and then exported to the cytoplasm to be translated into protein. So at any given time, the cell has a mixture of the RNA from the maternal or paternal copies of that gene. This is also the case when we classify the two copies of a gene as wild type and mutant. The single nucleotide differences between the two copies of the RNA produce differences in expression level and behaviors of their protein products. Having the ability to quantitatively measure this mixture of RNA would let us better understand the implications of these single nucleotide differences. Previously, the best way to take quantitative measurements of RNA expression was using RNA FISH. FISH stands for fluorescence in situ hybridization, and we can understand this by reading it backwards, where we hybridize short DNA oligos to the RNA of interest, this is done in situ or in place in fixed tissues, and each probe is labeled with a single fluorescent dye for detection. The effect of tiling many of these probes along the same RNA gives a specific signal above any off-target hybridization. So in this image, each bright spot represents a single mRNA molecule tiled with these probes. This allows us to count the RNA in single cells, but all RNA appear identical. We are incapable of distinguishing which copy of the gene they come from. So when we look at each cell, we know there are two copies of our gene of interest. For the RNA-colored magenta in this image, we want to know what portion of it came from the chromosome copy on the left, let's say that's the wild-type version of our gene, versus how many of the RNA came from the chromosome on the right that may have the mutated version. If we know there are single nucleotide differences, it would be great if we could detect them in situ to label each RNA. The detection challenge comes from the fact that the probe tiling approach of RNA fish is not sensitive to single nucleotide differences. All the probes that are binding to the common region of the RNA are unaffected, so it is necessary to use a single probe for discrimination, but in practice this has a number of challenges. The first is a balance between specificity and stable hybridization. All of the nucleotides of 20 to 30 base pair bind stably under common fish assay conditions of around 37 degrees Celsius but the destabilization energy from single base mismatches is insufficient to provide the ability to discriminate these differences. We would need a shorter probe, but that leads to less hybridization overall. We found the solution in a masked probe strategy. The fluorescently labeled oligo is pre-hybridized to a shorter complementary oligo called the mask, leaving an overhang region called the toehold. The search for the RNA target goes through the toehold sequence, and after binding to this region, a passive DNA strand displacement reaction automatically removes the mask to allow the probe to stably bind. Because the toehold is so short, the energy changes from a single base mismatch are sufficient to inhibit the strand displacement reaction. When using two probes, one for each version of the RNA target, the fully matched probe will outcompete the mismatched probe and stably bind to its target. There is another notable challenge when using single oligo probes, and that's false positives. With only a single source of fluorescence for detection, we cannot distinguish signal from probes bound to the true target or off-target binding somewhere else in the cell. But if you meditate long enough in a microscope room, you'll realize we can solve this using a mixed probe tiling approach. With one fluorescent signal identifying true RNA and second and third fluorescent signals classifying versions of the single nucleotide variants, we can simply look for co-localization of signal when processing our images and keep track of how many RNA the cell contains from each gene copy. We validated the assay using a set of human melanoma cell lines with the BRAF V600E mutation. Each bar represents a single cell, and the bar height is total BRAF RNA in that cell. The coloring indicates how many RNA were labeled as wild type, mutant, or unclassified. This data shows how the SNPFISH assay tells us genotype on a single cell basis. The small amount of mislabeling in the homozygous wild type and mutant lines is a consistent behavior of the assay and is accounted for in significance measures. We then applied the assay to measure RNA in a human lymphoblastoid cell line with known heterozygous single nucleotide variants. By counting the RNA for a number of cells and pooling them together, we get values for allelic expression in the cell population. Here we see DNMT1 is balanced in expression, 
whereas EBF1 and SUS12 show a significant bias towards the paternal allele. But what the SNPFISH assay uniquely allows one to look for is whether the allelic ratio at the cell population level is mimicked by individual cells, or does each cell have its own mixture of RNA. One way to think about allelic balance is to model each RNA as a flip of a coin, and each cell is a series of coin flips. A balanced cell shows a coin going back and forth according to the bias we see at the population level, whereas single cell imbalance is a coin producing runs of heads or tails as you flip it, indicating that the transcriptional process is biased in choosing which copy of a gene to use to produce the next RNA. Looking at the single cell data, we found that the individual cells express DNMT1 with a varying degree of bias towards the paternal or maternal allele. This means that the balance we see at the population level hides the fact that individual cells could be behaving very differently according to which version of the DNMT1 RNA they express. The p-value is our accounting of how often you expect to see single cell imbalance just by chance. SUS12 and EBF1 both had single cell behavior consistent with the allelic balance observed at the population level. In addition to targeting mRNA, the SNPFISH assay is compatible with targeting intronic sequences to measure active transcription in cells nucleus. We combined SNPFISH with their ICEFISH assay to detect whole chromosomes in the interphase nucleus. By targeting nucleotide variants on a number of genes along chromosome 19, we could distinguish the maternal from paternal chromosome. This experiment showcased the versatility of the SNPFISH method and we believe is the first example of classifying parental origin of autosomes in C2. With that, I'd like to acknowledge the other authors of this work, Paul Jinnart, Yi Chen Wei, and my advisor, Arjun Raj. I also want to thank other members of the Raj Lab for their support, the Herlin Lab for the melanoma cell lines, BioSearch Technologies for providing many of the reagents used in this work, and of course our funding sources. Thank you for listening.